I welcome you all to this session on uh, uh, OET reading section. I will give you a quick overview of OET reading, and then we will solve a few questions together in this session. As far as reading is concerned, there are 42 questions that are supposed to be solved in 60 minutes. There are different types of passages, like the first section is where you are supposed to show your skimming and scanning skills. The content is in the form of a table or some um, short notes. And the questions are in the form of fill up the blank or matching the answers. Uh, so short answer questions are there and you're supposed to do this part very, very quickly. 15 minutes, 20 questions. And the questions are usually word-based questions, which means it is individual words which you are supposed to focus on. The second part is sentence-based questions where there are uh, section B and C uh, is, is uh, related to that, where the questions are related to either a sentence or the whole paragraph, right? So we are going to discuss about part one specifically here, and we are going to do some questions together. So you'll get an idea of how the part one of reading section is. So let me just quickly go to that particular section here. So I've opened the test paper. The first step is the uh, collection of questions, as you can see. Second tab here is the passage. So what we'll do here is we'll do these questions together and I'll demonstrate how to answer, how to do, do skimming and scanning with the help of this example, all right? So are you all ready? Great. So here we have got the questions and here we have got the passage. What we do here is we do not go to the passage, we straight away go to the questions and we just have a quick mapping of the questions. It says various symptoms of patients who have taken too much. So what you can do is straight away underline the keywords, various symptoms of the patients who have taken this. Uh, the precise levels, the precise levels of paracetamol. So we are supposed to talk about precise levels. Steps to be taken when treating a paracetamol overdose patient whether paracetamol overdose was intentional. So the keyword is intentional here. The number of products containing paracetamol, we are supposed to find out number of products. What to do if there are no details, no details available of the time. So no details about the time of overdose. So we don't know when was the overdose taken. Dealing with paracetamol overdose patients who have not received adequate nutrition. So these are some keywords which I've noted. Now this helps me to quickly find the answers. Look at this, various symptoms of patients. Now I go to the passage here on the next page, actually not on this one. So I'll go to the next tab. And this one is the passage. And if I look at the quick, a quick glance at the passage tells me that this one, tab one is related to, text one is related to contradictions and interactions, which means what other, uh, medicines are there. I'm not even reading it. Text two gives me some table and here I can see some time limits given 24 hours, eight to 24 hours and uh, how much time has lapsed between paracetamol overdose and the treatment. Text three, as I see, is in the form of a graph where the graph is related to paracetamol poisoning, emergency treatment. So it is about emergency treatment. And the first one is the test D is clinical assessment which means when the patient comes, what kind of test and what kind of symptoms are tested and worked on. Now, if this is what it is, I go to question number one once again to find out what am I supposed to search for. Various symptoms. So where will symptoms come? Can you please tell me where will symptoms come out of these four sections? Of course, the symptoms will come in clinical assessment. When we do the assessment of the patient, we actually check the symptoms, right? So if you look at this, it says first, Initially, they are asymptomatic. Then there is hepatic necrosis, means damage of liver. And then other symptoms are there. Patient may also develop uh, these other symptoms as shown here. So these symptoms are shown and I can very much mark the first answer as D. Now the second one. The precise levels of paracetamol in the blood which required urgent intervention. So what is the best guess? Where will you find the precise levels of paracetamol? Well, this particular graph tells me how much paracetamol is there in the blood. Plasma paracetamol concentration, which means in blood how much 
paracetamol is there and what kind of emergency treatment is there. Now I don't have to read the whole graph, but I can very much see that here I can get the precise, precise level of paracetamol in the blood. So my answer for the second one would be C. I can quickly mark C here. The third one says the steps to be taken when treating a paracetamol overdose patient. So where do I find the steps? As I can clearly see, this particular table tells me about the steps. So step one, step two, step three, what kind of steps are supposed to be taken to treat a paracetamol patient? You know, if it is less than four hours, one hour since in, in ingestion, 75 mg or uh, per kg or taken considered activated charcoal. So these are the steps. So, you know, with regard to the number of hours uh, lapsed after uh, paracetamol overdose, different uh, this chart tells what kind of treatment is prescribed. So the answer to that must be text B, which means I'll write B for this answer. What about the next one? Whether paracetamol overdose was intentional. Intentional means patient took it intentionally. He wanted to, uh, it was not reluctantly, it was taken intentionally, which means something related to maybe damaging himself. You know, why would somebody uh, intentionally take something. So when I read this thing, clinical assessment, here we try to find out what was the reason that he took it. And you can see it says suicidal risk was a note left. So if somebody does commits a suicide or tries to commit a suicide, attempt a suicide, <clears throat> he usually leaves a note. So we are asking that. And that is why the answer to this one has to be D. So I quickly go there and write down D. What about the next one? It says the number of products containing paracetamol. As I can see, it was the first graph where the number of products was spoken about. And here we saw you know, interaction and contra uh, indications and interactions. So it says contra indications and interactions, which means how other medicines can also contain paracetamol. And if you look at this particular line very quickly, it says 118 brand names are known to contain paracetamol. The answer must be A in this case. So see, we are not reading the whole content. We are focusing on the head and we are trying to guess which particular paragraph will contain that answer. And accordingly, we go about it. It's not about how much you, are, you read. It's about how precisely you select the right portion. What to do if there are no details available of the time of the overdose? If you don't know when was the overdose taken, how will you uh, manage? So if there is no awareness about the time when overdose was taken, which means we are supposed to talk about the treatment and the steps. Now look at this. It says 24 hours are unable to establish, which means greater than 24 hours have passed, or we don't even know when it started. So in such a case, we are supposed to answer text B. So the answer to this one is text B and we'll mark B here. Okay, what about the last one? Dealing with paracetamol overdose patients who have not received adequate nutrition. So lack of nutrition is discussed here and which particular section would talk about nutrition? It might be the last one where their uh, clinical assessment was done. Probably I will see if it is there or it might be at some other place. So let me first go to the last paragraph. Uh, so let me just go to the question once again. I forgot what was the question. The question was uh, dealing with paracetamol overdose patient who have not received adequate nutrition, someone who has not eaten enough food. So where do they talk about adequate nutrition? Let me just skim to it quickly. If there is some word related to adequate nutrition and it says overdose. So here it is overdose part where high risk treatments are uh, tested. And if I look at this, it says malnutrition example, anorexia and all this should be treated with this particular medicine. So I see this is written in paragraph C. Uh, to, to sum of the whole thing, once again, we are not looking at the whole passage. We are not reading individual sections. What we are focused about is the headings of the paragraph and the, uh, the, the skill which is tested is how fast can you skim through it. We have gone through seven questions here. Uh, and as you can see, there are 13 questions plus a few more, which means 20 questions are there. And we are going at reasonably good speed. 
So this is what is the skill that you have to develop. How fast do you map the information and answer questions quickly as we demonstrated here. I hope this was useful to you. All the best to you.